Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I have more Cobra Convergence 7 presenters. I would like to introduce Audible Interlude. So, guys, uh, could you uh, introduce yourselves, uh, say who you are, uh, let everybody know um, what you do and where to find you? Uh, we are Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. I am your host, Dave West, codename Phantom Troublemaker. I am your co-host, Noel Wood, codename Crapshoot. And I'm your Cobra intern that's still just trying to figure everything out, codename Legion Cub. Uh, so we have podcasts that are available every single Friday, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, you can follow us at Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram. Uh, and we also do live streams every other week, although sometimes more often uh, we are thrilled to be taking part in Cobra Convergence. This is our second year. Uh, we have super secret exciting plans uh, for our Cobra Convergence live stream with our very special guest, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. Uh, we just were three lifelong G.I. Joe fans. We both grew up with Real American, or both, all three of us grew up uh, with Real American Hero in the 80s. Uh, and, and we just have had kind of similar paths as far as our fandom of G.I. Joe, but I think along the way, we've each had sort of different step, steps in different directions. Christian and I both got really deep into the 25th anniversary and the the modern style uh, Joe figures, whereas Noel kind of avoided all that and stuck with vintage the whole time. But uh, Noel, maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, your, your G.I. Joe path. Well, um, as I've said several times, my introduction to G.I. Joe was through my uncle, um, who had a lot of the 1960s and 70s Joes, um, going to my grandmother's house and getting into my uncle's like stash of toys, and uh, he eventually bequeathed all of them to me. So I had uh, several of the 12-inch Joes, my favorite one being the Mercury Astronaut. Uh, I still have, I showed it off a, a few episodes back, but I still have my, my Mercury Lander, um, and it's one of my favorite my favorite Joe toys of all time. Um, so when GI Joe came around in 1982, uh, my dad was actually encouraged me to play with GI Joe. Cause I, you know, my, my dad was in the Navy, so he was okay with me playing with like military toys. Um, and I fell in love. I, you know, got several Joes for Christmas in 82. I got, uh, it was clutch of the vamp, um, a Cobra officer. Um, and who else was, it? Oh, uh, flash were my first few joes and i was hooked from there and i said i've always been a vintage collector it took a while to even get me into classified um uh, but uh but vintage will always be o-ring will always be my jam i i think being part of a podcast kind of pressured you into classified a little bit more than the than you know if if we hadn't started it because we started uh in 20 about three years ago uh, in 2020, right as Classified was getting ready to happen. The, the world of Joe was very, very different when we started the show because originally it started uh, on the Needless Things podcast. We just did a G.I. Joe episode. Um, and we just had great chemistry, which I knew that we would. And I thought, you know what? Because I, I, Needless Things went for 400 episodes. Um and I really just wanted to try something else because that podcast was about everything. And I really wanted to focus back down on, on to my number one love, which was GI Joe. Uh, and after we recorded a couple of needless things, episodes about GI Joe, I was like, man, I, I want to get together with these guys and, and just do a show and really, really focus on one thing. I really want to have fun. I really want it to be entertaining. Uh, we, we are not, the gi joe wikipedia part of the reason we're doing this show is to look at different facets of joe and learn more and get educated and and discover things that we'd never looked at before christian you like know way more about 90s joe than i ever did well and so for like my joe journey um it <clears throat> started in 82 but where now doing the podcast, I realized I was lucky is by the time I was out of Joe, 
right? Not necessarily out of toy and toy collecting, but I was sort of done with Joe. We were getting into the 90s. It was the wild colors. Um, my younger brother was at the age where now he was into Ninja Turtles and G.I. Joe was doing Ninja Force. And then he got into G.I. Joe. So as we have looked at some of those later figures, you know, where people are like, oh, the neon and the drug enforcement and G.I. Joe in space with like stiletto spaceships and pogos. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And and so, you know, I'm not <laughs> anyone that listens to the podcast knows I'm not a fan of the ninja concept in gi joe but because my brother was i get this very inner i a different perspective because i don't see it the same way that noel and um phantom does but then i can you know reach out to my younger brother and be like hey do you remember this as a kid at that time what drew you to it? Because as an adult, me looking at it, I'm going, what? What were they thinking? <laughs> you know? And but big... it has also been, given me a love. Like, I, one of my very first projects when we started the podcast, um, I bought a rat and customized it and fell in love with it. And I was like, wait underneath all these garish colors there are still some really cool figures and really awesome vehicles so you so you each have kind of um a, a unique ex uh, perspective so you you each bring something to the table um but one of the things that i find um is common of a lot of folks that i talk to is that they were into G.I. Joe as kids, but then they got out of it for a while. Not everybody did. Some people stayed in, in it for the, you know, basically all the way through. But uh, did you guys have that experience where you got out of it for a while, but then later on as an adult, you came back in? I, you know, it's funny. I, I, until, I don't know at what point I realized that I, I really have kind of been in it. My G.I. Joe went from 82 when I bought my first figures or when my mom bought me my first figures off of one of the spinner racks at Eckerd uh, until about 87, although I had a couple of 88 figures, which I, I didn't realize they were 88. Like until we started doing the show, I really didn't go back and look at when everything happened and how like organize it by year and all that kind of stuff. But I had storm shadow version two it was one of the last figures i must have bought because by 88 i was getting into ninja turtles like that i never really stopped collecting toys but joe for me ended 87 88 but then in 97 when the toys r us that monstrosity of a set that we've talked about on the show we we, we did a segment about it uh the stars and stripes forever set when that came back i got back into joe and I've been back into Joe ever since, which I kind of didn't realize, but I went through when they did the 97 stuff, the real American hero, the O-rings, and then on into Valor versus Venom uh, and, and everything, G.I. Joe versus Cobra, and then into 25th anniversary. So I, I kind of didn't realize it, but I, I have quite a history of Joe there. Whereas, like I said, Noel, you, you've had a little different experience. Yeah, so uh, so in I'm I'm also a big Lego, uh, a big Lego person, and in the world of Lego, they have a term for the, those years, which is called your dark ages, from the time <laughs> that you put them away as a kid to when you start playing with them as as an adult. Um, and I mean, I my dark ages were from like '87. Essentially, once once there was no cartoon to support anymore, I, and I was also at that point in time, I was like 12, 13 years old. I was losing interest, so really, I didn't pay much attention to GI Joe for the rest of the eighties, for the nineties, I kind of like would, you know, if I saw somebody at school who had one of those catalogs, I'd sneak it and just kind of see what was in it or whatever. But I just didn't really have a, a good idea of what was going on. Um, I did start 
doing other toy collecting back in the 90s. I started collecting Transformers again, and I was reading Toy Fair magazine. That's how I became aware that they were reissuing G.I. Joe. Um, and that Stars and Stripes Forever set. So to Dave, it was kind of a reawakening. To me, it was probably what kind of killed it for another couple of decades <laughs> because I was excited the idea of getting like those original figures again. And as soon as I walked in Toys R Us and I saw that thing, I was like, well, I'm not buying this. And I walked out and I just put it all aside for several more years. Um, it wasn't until, and I still had, I, I still had some Joes and I was actually still, if I, if I was at a yard sale or if I saw something at a thrift store or an antique shop, and I mean, I'd pick it up, but it was all just sitting in boxes. And it wasn't until we started doing this podcast that, all this got back up on the shelves. <laughs> and I, I had stuff in storage for years and years and years, but once we started doing this, I pulled out all my figures, restored all my O rings, got them all back up there so they could be up for display. And and now I I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> and see, when I graduated, when I went off to college, I started working part time in comic shops. I was still toy collecting, even though I was out of GI Joe. And I would say those in between years, when Dave and Noel the, were in their dark ages, every time I went to the toy store, I still went and looked at what GI Joe was putting out because we're talking this is the era of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, yeah. Sergeant Savage, and that's probably the closest I, I've ever been to being like the cliche. I would have been popular on YouTube at that point <laughs> because I would walk by the G.I. Joe section and just go, what is this crap? Like, it's you should be putting out the original figures. That's what people want. Did they learn nothing from Generation 2 Transformers? So that sort of just, I was out until the 25th line. And you know what's funny? I always forget about Star. I always talk about '97 is when you know Stars and Stripes Forever. I, I kind of started back in. I always forget about Sergeant Savage because I had a few pieces of Sergeant Savage, but it was just so annoying because they were too big. Yeah, and well, I, I even bought that on Extreme. I even remember no. buying that first issue of the GI Joe Extreme comic. First of all, because the cover looked so cool. Yeah. And then once you got inside, it was a whole different thing. Um, but I, I was like, I was always willing to try something yes. during those years. Yes. Yeah, 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 for sure. So you have kind of different stories of, of coming back in or, or if, uh, in the case of Dave, you know, we're never out for very long. Um, but uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting you guys at Joe Fest um, and you guys did uh, – the opening panel at Joe Fest this year was it last year as well? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I I know this we're in Cobra Convergence here, but we're still pretty fresh off of Joe Fest. Uh, can you talk kind of about your Joe Fest experience and how that went? Oh yeah, um, I, Joe Fest is incredible. Uh, we my son and I went for the first time in 2019. And I, you know, I really didn't know what to expect from it. And, and it was just the, there's so much more than just GI Joe, because if you go, you know, the dealer room, there's tons of different stuff in there, which is great, but it's also this incredibly pure concentration of GI Joe-ness uh, and just talking to people, you know, anytime you can get into a community that shares something that, you know, I mentioned wanting to start a show that was focused on one thing. And there's something just really special about, you know, meeting somebody and knowing that you have that one thing in common, knowing that you've got that one thing to talk about. And granted, there are lots of different facets of G.I. Joe and there are lots of possibilities for G.I. Joe conversations to take turns. But in general, everybody's there to have fun and appreciate G.I. Joe in its many forms. Uh, and this year, just I mean, the best year ever. We we did that opening panel. Uh, we d did a game show for the first time ever the big joe game show which we had a great time doing gave away lots of fabulous prizes uh got to talk to all kinds of people people who knew the show like wh when we were doing that panel and we said who here has heard the show and like most of the room raised their hands that was amazing that's great we, you know you love that kind of thing and we just 
want to have fun. The whole point of Audible Interlude is to have fun with G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is for everyone. Uh, and we just we want to be inclusive. We want to have fun. We want to talk about G.I. Joe. Uh, we're not our, our, our motto is enthusiasm over expertise because half of the point of the show is for us to learn more about Joe because nobody knows everything. We want to look at facets we've never looked at before. We want to look at things that we didn't know about. We want to talk about shadow ninjas, you know, whatever. But yeah, Joe Fest is a great opportunity to, to be live and in person interacting with Joe fans and to meet the incredible Ritz Murphy. Everybody needs to check out. Everybody <laughs> yes. needs to get on Instagram and check out Ritz Murphy. He is awesome. Yeah, he, uh, absolutely. That is one dude that I met uh, before Joe Fest as well. Uh, uh, quite a fellow. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yep. So, you guys, um, I, I didn't want to interrupt. I, uh, if uh, the, the other two of you have some Joe Fest experiences to, uh, to share. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'll just... Same thing. Well, I started going uh, kind of in the, you know, in the hole that got filled when the official G.I. Joe conventions went away is when Ed started doing Joe Fest. And I, you know, the first couple um, being a member of the finest, I was always there doing stuff with with the finest booth at the time. Um, it's, you know, in, in our home state of Georgia. So it was much easier for us to go there than some of the other Joe cons that were in faraway places. Um, but uh, it you know, just part of what rekindled my um, mass rebuying of Joe stuff was just walking into that amazing showroom or that, that, that amazing uh, dealer room floor and just finding like all those deals on toys that like I had forgotten existed. Um, so that's, it's, and this year, no different. Uh, I spent, uh, spent a little bit more money than I, well, not more than I really expected to, but more than I really wanted to. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, it's it's just great to uh, when you're in the zone, you're just like, oh, you know, more more cool stuff, more cool nostalgia. But also getting to see like all these all these great people getting to talk to our fans. I, we met several people that are, you know, just regular listeners of ours. And it was great to actually get a chance to talk to them one on one and, you know, get to hear their stories, too. And this was actually my first year. Uh, I was not able to go last year because of work. And I, you know, I had seen pictures that had been posted that did not prepare me for the scale of the convention. I, uh, I am in a lot of very niche fandoms and conventions that happen for those fandoms are maybe a quarter of the size of joe fest and so in my mind i was thinking that dealer's room was only half the size of what it was and having produced my background is in event production so in florida all the years I spent helping, you know, being part of putting on anime conventions, all the years at Dragon Con, and I'm sure Phantom and Noel can attest to this too. When you're walking around and you run into people who know you, it's because of like them seeing you and interacting with you. Whereas with the podcast, when we were at Joe Fest and you're walking along and somebody yells out, Cobra intern. And you're just like, what? <laughs> what? Like, so it's it's amazing to be able to get to meet, like Noel said, to be able to meet and actually have conversations with these people that are enjoying the craziness that is Audible Interlude. <laughs> <laughs> the craziness well uh, uh before I, we move on i did want to say thank you uh for being in cobra convergence again so thank you guys also thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak a little bit uh at your at your joe fest forum i appreciate that uh but uh, but thanks you've been you guys have been very generous um last year i got a hat uh, just like the one you're wearing it's a nice hat it's pretty cool um so um before before I move on though, I do want to remind everybody that audio uh, Audible Interlude will be uh, posting their Cobra Convergence presentation 
uh, on the day that you see this. So as you're seeing this, there should be a link uh, in the description of this video. So please uh, check that out immediately as soon as you're done here. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to them. Make sure that you follow them. Make sure uh, that you don't miss an, an episode. Uh, but uh, you guys are in this for the second year. Um, I haven't had a chance to ask uh, you guys, and it's kind of my favorite question, uh, is there a Cobra character that um, is your favorite, the one that speaks to you, one that's the most important to you? Who is your favorite Cobra? Uh, for me, my favorite Cobra and my favorite G.I. Joe character is Firefly. Uh, when I was a kid, that something about that urban camo, something about that backpack with the toolkit, like that is one of my top five action figures of all time. I loved Firefly. I, he was the lead operative on every mission that went out. I actually, uh, when I was a kid, I, I had a friend named Peyton who was a little bit older than me and who had a little bit more G.I. Joe stuff than me and had this basement where he had a Cobra base on one side and a Joe base on the other side that he had built up out of just styrofoam you know remember how exciting it was to get a new like piece of electronic equipment when you were a kid and you'd get the styrofoam out and the styrofoam packing would be a base of operations for something so anyway we we would uh when i'd go over to his house one of us would be the joes one of us would be the cobras but every single time firefly was always the lead of any cobra operations i i just i love that character I, the word saboteur sabotage saboteur like it's just cool i just i just fireflies awesome <laughs> for me it's it's always been scrap iron um there was just something about like getting that figure and it was really of it was the most deluxe figure that you could really buy carded at that time because it came with that little rocket launcher which was like almost like having like a small vehicle with it so it was one of my favorite toys because of that but also just the way that he was portrayed and you, know, you didn't see him a lot in the comics or the or the cartoon but he played a like a pretty big role a few times like i mean he was the one who killed the soft master um you know we were just reviewing uh, uh episode four of the revenge of cobra and he's the one that stops duke and and, and honda Lou in their tracks uh when they're you know trying to escape so you know i always like seeing him in those things he was one of the when i first started doing costuming he was one of the characters that was one of my dream costumes and um before i was able to secure a properly made helmet from pit viper studios uh i tried my first hand at, at molding my own scrap iron helmet and it was a disaster but <laughs> after sinking that much money into it i i had to go out and wear it in, in, in public at dragon con um yeah. so i eventually did go with the proper costume but yeah just always one that sang to me and so when they showed the classified version he was immediately in my card at like one minute after he went on sale so I, I'm detecting a 1984 theme. So let's let's see if we stick with that. Let's see, let's see if, if we break the trend or if we keep the trend. So over the years, mine has changed. But if I look back for when I was a kid, it was Tomax and Zaymot. Because the whole Corsican twins mm -hmm. aspect made for great storytelling with play. So... Well, I'm I'm afraid uh, that's not from 1984. So I know. We'll have to <laughs> if you listen to our podcast, uh, thanks for playing. You know. We have our. Uh... I am always the one that throws the wrench. <laughs> well, we knew he <laughs> wasn't going to say well, Storm I Shadow. Say that my favorite Cobra is Eagle Eye Joe. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, I thought it was going to be Monkey Wrench. <laughs> I thought that would be appropriate. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, again, thank you guys for participating and a reminder for everyone to check the link in the video. Uh, we've got a few more minutes here um, and I'm trying to make sure that I uh, give you guys enough time to talk because I want to hear from all of you. Um, but uh, as we wrap up here for the last few minutes, um, I guess I'll uh, turn the the turn the, the forum over to you guys to uh 
uh, say whatever final words you want to say to the audience. Um, and um, again, I will encourage everyone to check out their presentation for Cobra Convergence, which you should be able to see right now. Uh, you know, we just, we're, we're Joe fans. We, there are, we, we like to say anything GI Joe is good. Everybody likes different things. Uh, we don't all love every single aspect of GI Joe, but we want to see GI Joe in the world. We want to see people appreciating GI Joe. We want to talk about GI Joe. We want to discover new things about GI Joe. You know, Noel was talking about the dealer room at Joe Fest and finding those things that you had forgotten existed. But it's also great to go in there and see things that you never knew existed, like figures, because even even just the 82 to 94 range of a real american hero there's so much in it and you know i've i've gone up and down yojo.com and 3djoes.com but there's always the weird vehicle that you see in person and you're like what is this i don't remember <laughs> this thing uh, I, I actually had the opportunity uh, second. There's a great great toy shop in georgia uh, outside of atlanta called second chance toys and a, a friend of the show, Kelly Hudson, works there, and he gave me kind of a sneak peek at some of the Joe stuff they have in the back room. And there was this big, giant vehicle that I felt like I'd never seen before. I know I have because I've gone up and down 82 to 94, and the, there's this craft that came out of the front, and there were like two different bubble. I love bubble, whether it's a helmet, whether it's something on a vehicle, give me a good bubble and I'm happy. And he's showing me the, like all these vehicles that are new to me because it's all post 87 stuff. And, and, and then we go back and we look at the 12 inch figures. And so we've barely scratched the surface of that stuff. We really need to focus more on that, but it's just GI Joe is so much fun. It's so, uh, it's so inclusive. I learned so many life lessons from that goofy Sunbow cartoon <laughs> about people working together, about equality, about teamwork, about every, all of these just critical social and life lessons that this brand has taught me. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's what we grew up with and it's, it's important, but it's also fun. And like I said, GI Joe is for everyone. And, and we, that's just what, you know, that's what we're here for is to have fun with Joe. I am. Um... I'm just happy that we're living in a time where really we have an embarrassment of Joe product that's out there for us. So when you, we were just kind of going down the list of everything that was revealed this last month in G in Joe June or yo Joe June. And to, if you would have told me four years ago that we were getting this much content, this much product, and you know, we don't even have like a proper cartoon show or anything like that at this point and isn't that crazy there's not even any media right now yeah i mean we got we got a live action movie uh it's been was it two years now um but i mean really that's that's the extent of it but yet we're still getting so much product to the point where it's like i can't even keep up with how many things have been announced or uh we've gotten uh reveals or i've already pre-purchased at this point in time it's you know it's it's a great time to be a joe fan and it's i mean it's great to have the luxury of being able to pick and choose. And, you know, I see a lot of negative comments about stuff online and I'm not going to say that sometimes I don't get a little bit cynical about some of the content that gets put out. Um, but I mean, really there's, if, if you don't like this offering, there's going to be three or four more things that you're going to love. So yeah. uh, there's, there's always something out there for everybody. I think. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago when we really didn't have anything. Um, yeah. and, uh, and no prospect of having anything. Uh, but now in recent years, it's, it's started to pick back up and now we've, we have a steady flow of new product and different kinds of product as well. Licensed, you know, official has lab retail, um, all this stuff. So I, 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 I think I'm on the same wave wavelength with you there. Well, yeah. and all of these ancillary uh, companies as well. We've got Super 7. We've got Icon Heroes. We've got all of these licensees. We've got a new role-playing game. Like, it's wild how much stuff there is out there. And like Noel said, you can't even keep track of it all. Yeah, when I hear people complaining about the Super 7 reaction figures, I'm like, there's a million other things that you can buy. Let me love those things. Right, <laughs> you know? right. 
Well, I w- I'll end this uh, just by giving another great plug for Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. Um, I just want to say, you know, Phantom brings to the show passion and love. And my gosh, his photographic memory from when he was a kid oh. is <laughs> astounding. Uh, Noel brings – Noel is our wiki for yeah. Joe. Yeah. It, you could start describing, oh, there was – I vaguely remember this panel in this comic. And he'll be like, oh, yeah, G.I. Joe Special Missions, issue 12, page 13. <laughs> I yeah. think that's a little bit of an over. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I I go for the deep dives, and again, like if you want the weird and where did that come from? Uh, and so I think that by bringing the three of us to those three perspectives together, if you listen to us, one, you're going to have a good time, and two, we like to hear your perspectives as well. Like they said, there's no right or wrong way to love G.I. Joe. We may not like something, but you love it. And we want to hear what makes you love it because that can change our attitudes. Yeah. Uh, I got out. I sold off my O-rings when I got into 25th, and I was just like, uh, O-rings. From doing this podcast, every purchase I made at Joe Fest was O-rings. So... So what I'm hearing is that people should tune in for passion and Mm -hmm. love. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's what we bring to the table. And scented Uh, candles, but you know. (laughs) Uh, Sincerely, thank you guys for being in Cobra Convergence again. And and, and thank you for being so cool um, at at Joe Fest uh, and on your show. Um, I guess I'll wrap it up there. Um, but I, again, I want to remind everybody there will be a link in the description of this video, uh, that will take you to audible interlude. So you can check out their Cobra convergence seven, uh, presentation. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, and I will wrap it up and I guess we'll all see you in the convergence. Absolutely. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of this. We, we love it. We're happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you guys. (laughs) 